How many are thankful that God answers prayer? Come on, everybody. All locations, as Pastor Jody mentioned, there's a lot going on, right? And uh, we have a big election that's happening on Tuesday. And how many are be thankful when all the ads are done, right? Like, come on. I'm not, like, not against any of those people, but boy, I'll be glad when we can kind of get back uh, into, away from that. But, but our role is to pray. And so at all of our locations, Elk River, Maple Grove, Spring Lake Park, uh, Lakeville, all of us, we're not only so happy that you're joining us online, but we're going to join together as a church family. We're going to pray. So let's just open up your hands like this. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray over um, our nation. We pray that a move of God would happen. We pray that your will would be done in our elections that are happening even now and that will conclude on Tuesday evening. God, we just thank you for moving in people's hearts, men and women, and that, God, we pray that the leaders of our land would know you as their personal Savior. And, God, we pray that a move of God would happen across the United States of America, in our communities, in our schools, in our nation, our state houses, our, our national government houses. God, we just pray your blessing. And, God, we also thank you for miracle offering that's coming up that we get to touch the world. God, for sisterhood, we pray for hundreds and hundreds of, of women to come and find Jesus as their Lord and Savior. God, we thank you that in the midst of all that's going on, you are at work in your church, and we are so glad for that, and we commit it all into your care. In Jesus' name, everybody said a good amen. Amen, amen. amen. You can be seated. <coughs> come on, that is so, so good what we get to be a part of. And uh, I love it. Everybody say the phrase, because of, because of eternity. Thank you, Pastor Nathan. Because of eternity. One more time. Eternity. It's amazing all the different stuff that we get to be a part of. Last week, Pastor Nate kicked off the series. If you missed it, go online. It was a great message. Uh, taught us on tithing and, and principles, and there was so much there. And next week, as, as you heard in the, in the video about Miracle Offering, we have Project Rescue that's going to be with us. All locations get to hear from them. Invite friends, family, extended people. They will be encouraged, inspired, and challenged by the message of Project Rescue. It will be, it really, really will be great. So just really excited. Today's topic is everyone, everywhere. Say, let's go. You didn't say it right there. Come on, one, two, three. Let's go. One, two, three. Everyone, everywhere. Some of you know that is a theme of our series, that of, of this series, but also of the year for Kingdom Builders is everyone, everywhere. And Pastor Nate said that's our theme for the entire year for the church. So it's amazing, again, what we get to be a part of and all the different things. And I just want to begin by saying for everybody that's with us at, at Emmanuel this weekend, even if you're watching online, no matter what location you're a part of, I pray right now you would just begin to open hearts and just receive what God wants to say to you. Not just what I'm saying, but what the Spirit of God wants to say to each and every one of us that are at church this weekend, or they're going to watch this message this week, because how many know God's still speaking to hearts, right? He is still speaking to hearts, and it's going to be, I just, I think it's an incredible opportunity to hear from Him. So I want to start by asking you this question. Um, who at Emmanuel at all of our locations, go ahead and raise your hand if this applies to you. Uh, who here um, has at least one or more times been part of an extended road trip in a vehicle with young children? Can I see your hands? All right, there's a little bit of resonating that's going on in the room, right? There's usually in that, in that, in that time, in that experience, excuse me, there's this, there's um, usually if you're with young kids, uh, Jane and I have done, did a road trip to Pensacola, Florida from the Twin Cities for about 10 years with our three young kids, 21 hours in the minivan. Come on, somebody, right? I was, I was thrilled when they designed a second door to those minivans. Remember that? Anyways, but uh, 21 hours in that, in that minivan, and we, wanted, we went down to see family uh, in the panhandle of Florida in the Gulf of Mexico, and it was awesome. But the road trip was quite an adventure with young children. Usually... If you've taken a trip with young children, a long road trip, let's say over four or five hours, usually there's two questions they ask. The first question, sometimes we forget, and it's usually within 30 minutes of leaving the driveway, is can I stop for the bathroom, right? And that is after we have told them all to go to the bathroom, right? 
And this still happens today, by the way. We're grandparents and we've, we've gone on a few trips with our little, our little grandchildren. The second question that has been happening for ages on end is you might get a couple hours into that road trip. It might be 21 hours long. And how many know the question that a lot of kids will ask at that point? Yeah, when are we gonna get there? Or are we there yet? Right? And I was just thinking about this over the last couple of weeks as Pastor Nate has, gave me the opportunity to speak this weekend. And I was just, I, because I, I was thinking there's, at times I hear from people at Emmanuel, you might even be thinking this weekend as you're in church, you might even be thinking, wow, Emmanuel puts a lot of emphasis on the Great Commission. Emmanuel puts a lot of emphasis on kingdom builders. Emmanuel feels like, like we're, we're every year we wanna do more, reach more, give more, go more, pray more. And, and some of you might be in church just saying, hey, hey, Pastor Darren, like when will we hit the finish line? Like when will it be done? When will we get there? Just like little kids will ask us on a road trip. And can I tell you the answer to that question? The answer to that question is like, when will it be enough? When will we slow down? When, when will we stop? The, end, the answer to that question is our theme. It's when everyone everywhere hears the message of God's love in a powerful way. Until then, you can clap there, but until then, we are gonna keep our foot on the gas. We're gonna continue to say, even at times when it's inspiring or challenging, that's, that's, that's when it's over is when everyone everywhere hears the message of God's love. Matthew 24 and verse 14, look at this with me. It says, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world, the whole world, so that all nations, everybody say all nations. All nations will hear it and then, and then the end will come. Jesus, I'm gonna pause here before I read Acts 1.8, that Jesus is saying, just crystal clear, it's in red, it's in the Bible, it's Jesus speaking. Just, I know it's, it's almost so simple, but just to grab a hold of it, Jesus says, I will tell you where the finish line is. Clearly, no ambiguity. Well, I think differently. Jesus is saying, here's where the finish line is. When everyone in all nations has heard about the amazing love of God and has an opportunity to receive him, that's when the end will come. It's just, so I don't, I don't have to ask that question because Jesus declares in Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me, what's the next word? Everywhere, come on all locations, say everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. that's where our theme comes from. We are to be witnesses everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful Jesus didn't leave anybody out. Jesus, because you, you might be here and say, I, I have a real heart for the city. I have a real heart for my community, or for the schools that are around our church, and our youth team, our kids team, and I'm like, that is so great that you have a heart for that. And there's others that are like, you know, I, I just want God to move in our country and you're praying for the election, which is a great thing to do. And you're praying for our leaders, which is a great thing to do. And you're praying for revival to happen in our country, which is a great thing to do. And Jesus says, Jesus says, that's who we're supposed to reach as well. There's others in here that are like, I got this huge heart for Africa. I can't shake it. It's in my spirit, it's in my heart. And every tribe, the scripture says, is gonna hear about the message of Jesus. And that just lines up other people in other places of the world. And I would say again, aren't you glad that Jesus didn't leave anybody out? Some of you are like, oh, my family member, my prodigal child, my brother or sister that's been on the run from God for a long time. God didn't leave him or her out either. God's desire, God says the power of the Holy Spirit is in our lives to achieve this mission that we're called to be a part of. So I wanna ask you, I'll ask you just a couple more times, but I wanna, I wanna ask you to, to say this aloud after I say it. Say this phrase, we are all in this together. One more time, we are all in this together. 
So as we go into the kind of the heart of this message and, and we read some of the instructions that Jesus gives us and Paul gives us and Romans gives us, just that, that we are all in this together. The focus of this series, Pastor Nate kicked it off last week and he talked about some of this, about this idea of the title, Because of Eternity. So the focus of the series is that we are to make decisions today with eternity in mind. We're to make decisions today with eternity in mind. So, so that's the focus. When our location pastors all tell us to pray to get ready for miracle offering, when we're thinking about who we're inviting to sisterhood, when we're thinking about the dip, that what's going on with our nation, we are to make decisions today with eternity in mind. So that's the focus of our series. And as Pastor Nate and I, honestly, a month and a half ago, we were talking about this title, just praying about it and thinking about it and, and just hearing each other's thoughts on it. And I, just, I was just, just reminded, and I, I remember saying to him, the reason this is such a challenge is that honestly, remember I said we're all in this together, honestly, most of us make our decisions because of our today. Because of our today. You got quiet on me, didn't you, right? Most of us make our most significant decisions because of what's going on in the today part of our lives. What's happening in our bank account? What's happening in our employment? What's happening on my calendar? What's happening with the availability I have in this area or that area? What's happening in my children's lives? It's not that any one of those things are necessarily bad, but most of us, including myself, very often, we're making decisions because of our today. And that's very normal. Everything we watch, everything we see, everything we hear, every advertisement is all about today. It's all about right now. And so that happens to all of us. It's very natural. So I share that to say that, that when we look at this, this whole idea, the, the switch, I would say, that Jesus is asking us to make in this series the switch to making decisions with eternity in mind, I just wanna say it's no small pivot. It's no small pivot. I am still a work in progress on this thing, if I can be honest with you. I'm still a work in progress, but how many know we're all still a work in progress? And God's still speaking to us, and God's still pulling for us, and God's still cheering us on. And so it just, I just wanna kinda of level the ground for all of us and just say, hey, we're all in this together. We're all in this together, we're all praying, we're all asking God, God, what do you want me to do? God, what are you stirring me to do? Because we are all in this process together. Let's look at Matthew chapter 28. It says this, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, Baptizing them, in the name, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end, end of the age. Mark 16, 15 says this, and he told them, go into all the world. Everybody say all. all. Go into all the world and preach the good news to how many? To everyone. Go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Last Sunday at church, again, if you missed it, please watch it online. We showed part one of a, of a generosity video story from Kevin and Susie, talked about their stepping into obedient giving. We wanna show part two of that video right now. So here at all of our, all of our locations, let's watch this video together. Each year, we kind of really look at the things that, uh, what are the things, God, that you have for us to believe you for? And it's always a stretching kind of a prayer, like what is it that you want us to do that's beyond us, bigger than us? And we have both have just such a heart for, uh, for Africa and the people in Africa. And we, um, we had this opportunity in there to saw a big need uh, about a school and uh, something that was needed there. And so we have adopted this opportunity to uh, do something that was way beyond what we thought we could do. You know, tithing we do in obedience and the generous beyond tithing to kingdom builders and is where the excitement really starts and it's where things really get uh, to be uh, this adventure of walking with God and seeing what he's gonna do with uh, over and above that we can give. The God we serve is a global God. Yeah. He cares about 
obscure people groups. He cares about the widow, the orphan, those who are eating off of trash heaps. And the fact that God is sending people to these places to serve, that is God's heartbeat. And what's amazing to me is that as you give like through Kingdom Builders, you might forget about it. God never does. He keeps good records. And there is a day coming in heaven where there are going to be people lining up to say, you changed my life. My whole community came to Christ because you supported this missionary and I met them at the water well. They led me to Christ and then my whole family came to Christ. And I can't wait to be in the crowd cheering you yeah. on when you've got a long line of people saying, my life is different because you so generously. That I know is part of our calling because yeah. I know it's God's heart for sure. That ripple effect goes far beyond what you can even imagine. Yeah. Yeah, come on, we can celebrate that. I loved uh, so many comments in that video. I love one of the comments that Kevin and Susie shared that, that the God we serve is a global God. I mean, I could preach a whole message just on that phrase. Actually, that's what we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes. The God we serve, the God you and I serve at Emmanuel, the God that we say yes to and invite into our heart to be our Savior and Lord, He is a global God. It would be arrogance to feel that he cares more about me than he does somebody across the world. And we're not going to think that way because he loves this. He has this incredible, unconditional love where his bandwidth of love can, can reach everybody because that's how loving he is. I also like the phrase that the, they use, that the ripple effect of generosity. What takes place is so amazing when we are faithful in our tithe and generous in our kingdom builders, and not only in giving, but in praying and in going. It's a, our time invested. It truly is a ripple effect. It's a multiplier that happens, and it's so amazing, and it's so, so, so key. So I want to I wanna teach, if I could, and kind of just drill down a little bit. So if, if you like a little deeper teaching, I think you're going to like this, this next part because it's some areas that God's just been challenging me, challenging me on. There's key places all throughout Scripture, okay, church? All throughout Scripture, there's clear, there's clear places and there's clear direction where, the, where, where God's Word tells us the order, everybody say order, the order of how to do things, okay? Not every place, but there's, there's all these places in Scripture where God says, first do this, then do this, then do this. So some examples of that. He says this is the order. So he talks about sowing and reaping, right? Before we can reap, we must sow. So sowing is the right order, then reaping. He talks about, Jesus talked about forgive and be forgiven. Forgive and be forgiven. So it's just really important. You can read this all throughout the New Testament, forgive and be forgiven. Another place it talks about is first be a tither, then be an offering generous giver. And it talks about that. Malachi 3 talks about it. Jesus talks about it. It's this is, this is the right order. There's another passage that talks about first give, then receive. Give, then receive. Some of you have heard me, if you've heard me speak a few times, you know one of the greatest principles I treasure in my life is the principle that's this, blessing follows obedience. It's not reversed. There's the right order is blessing follows obedience. So if I want God's blessing, First, I walk in his obedience. So let me just share this with you. I feel like God's been showing me this over the last few weeks. There's an order to the Great Commission. Here's what it is. Here's the order. You'll see it up on the screen. It's go, reach, disciple. Leave it up there if you would just for a moment. It's go, it's reach, it's disciple. This is in our, our app as well. You can follow along. So let's say those three, three things. Go, reach, Disciple. Come on, all locations, one more time. One, two, three. Go, reach, disciple. That's the order of the Great Commission. And we're going to read some passages of Scripture, a long passage from the book of Romans here in just a moment. But I just want us to know that first we're supposed to go, then we're supposed to reach, then we're supposed to disciple. And if you're like, well, well I think reach should be first. Well, that's not what God's Word says in the Great Commission. First we go, whether it's across the street or across the country or around the world, first we gotta go. And then we gotta reach, we gotta do something, we gotta share God's love with them. And then after we have done that, then we would want to disciple them. 
get them plugged in, get to growth, get in growth track, experience Redwood Faith, be a part of a connect group, join Team Emmanuel, all the different stuff that we can help somebody grow and become a disciple, but it's in that order. First it is go, then it is reach, then it is disciple. So Romans chapter 10 gives us this powerful outline and uh, we're gonna read several verses here. So uh, if you love God's word, um, say amen. amen. All right, thank you, that's so important. So Romans chapter 10 and verse eight. So don't, don't miss this order I just talked about because we're gonna bring it back as we wrap up the message in a few minutes here. It says, Romans chapter 10 says this, in fact it says, the message is very clear, very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart, and that message is the very message about the faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Come on, that's a good thing right there, right? What's it take? Well, that's what it takes, church, right? You will be saved. How many thankful doesn't say, and 19 more things, right? It just says that the incredible grace of God is just, it's just so powerful. Verse 10 says, for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. It is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. And the scripture tells us anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew, look at this, Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. Why would we call people at Emmanuel to generosity? Because we serve a generous God. Because it's, it's so, so powerful and, and so simple. I love it. Jew, I'm gonna say it one more time. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. Verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord again will be saved. He's like, in case you didn't get it a few verses ahead, I'm gonna say it again. Verse 14, now look at this. It kind of turns to what I would call a, this challenge, like kind of pushing us a little bit to think deeper. But the author of Romans says, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him unless they have never heard about him? And how, how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without them being sent. That is why the scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news. So for just a couple minutes, we're gonna get the order right. We're gonna get it right. We're just gonna look at this passage of Romans and just see exactly what it says. And then, and then, and then as we kind of go to the end of this message, we're gonna pray, we're gonna ask God, but it's really important that we get the order right in this passage. And so I'm gonna, I wanna share three areas with you, and I'm gonna give, the, the give you the heads up before I even jump into them. These three areas we're just gonna call really simple, what, why, how. Everybody say what? what? Say why? why? Say how. how. So we're not gonna make it more complicated because God's word doesn't make it more complicated. Romans tells us the what, the why, the how. So the first point is the what. And what is this? It's clarity on the mission. It's clarity on the mission. The what that we are supposed to be about, not just the lead pastor, not just the pastoral team, not just our global elders, our elders, not just those that serve at Emmanuel, not just those at Spinway Park, Elk River, Maple Grove, Lakeville, all of us watching online, all of us, we're supposed to have clarity on the mission. This is our mission. The mission is that the people of the world aren't going to have an opportunity to, to hear about God's amazing love unless we all have clarity that we gotta do something about it, right? And so I know some of us are like, hey man, I've heard this before and I like it. And some are, you're kind of like, well, I'm not, that, this is kind of a, this, this is kind of sharing challenging thoughts, but it's really, it's really basic and it's really an invitation to such an incredible, incredible journey with God. But the first order is what? Clarity on the mission. I love how the passage says every Jew, every Gentile, all nations, everyone has a chance. There's 195 nations in our world right now. 195. 
Our nation, it's a great nation, the United States of America, we're just one. There's 194 other nations that God loves with an unconditional love. So we have total clarity on the mission. It's everyone everywhere. Pastor Darren, that's idealistic. Pastor Nate, I don't know. You're shooting for the stars. Guilty. Yes, we are. Right? Because it's God's mission, right? So just, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push on these a little bit because it's so important. The what is it? clarity on the mission. Here's the second one, the why. The why. And the why is simply this. Because they have never heard. Because they have never heard. Some of you might be at church right now and you might be like, well, I wish it was a little deeper what, you say, what you're saying, pastor. This is what I got right here. It's the why. Until we get this right, let's not look for something deeper, right? Because they have never heard. Some of the students in our schools have never heard. Some of the, some of the people that live on the East Coast of the United States still have not heard. But, and there's nations all over the world where they still have not heard. Some of you are like, I, I, I'm not sure, how is, how is that possible with the internet? And sometimes we hear things that are untrue and, and that are lies, and it's, it's just something that we gotta kind of push back. So again, the why is they have never heard. How many at Emmanuel, all locations, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. How many at Emmanuel believe that everyone in the world deserves the opportunity to hear about God's love? Put your hand up, right? Come on, that should be everybody, right? So that is, that is, that is the why. Presently, presently, there's approximately 7,000 unreached people groups in the, in the world. 7,000. I almost didn't share that because I thought maybe that's too daunting of a number. 7,000. But how many know that our God is not intimidated by daunting? Right? Presently, I'm praying. I spent some time with a missionary about a week ago, and I'm, I, I, I'm praying for the Alawite people group. The Alawite people group is about 2.2 million people. Most of them live on the border of northern Lebanon and Syria and that surrounding area. There's 2.2 million of them, and the best missiologists in the world can identify about 15 Christians. 15. I'm, how many believe every one of them deserves the opportunity to receive God's love? Amen? I don't even know how, how we can do it all, but I do know how God feels about all of them. And so we're just gonna, we're just gonna go for it at Emmanuel. We're just gonna do that and say, God, we wanna respond in the right way because it's so, so important. I have this written down in my notes and I'll read it just as I say it. The note, the, my note is this, eternity is really at stake. And here's what I have written next to my notes, church. I, it literally says, I know that sounds dramatic, but it's true. I get it, okay, I get it. I, I don't like people that go over dramatic in their talks either. But I'm like, wait, it's true. Eternity's at stake. And so I just, I, I, we at Emmanuel have this passion. Again, it's not just around the world, it's in the US, it's in our communities as well. We should be praying for all the families, by the way, that are gonna receive our Thanksgiving boxes. We should be praying for them at all locations that God would use those gifts, those blessings to people that are under-resourced in our communities that need God's love. So it's just so important that we remember that eternity is at stake. Here's the third one. Everybody say how. How is what will I do? How is what will I do? So we have the what, we have the why, and we have the how. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you that the how is like the simplest of all. And it's literally in the scripture we just read in Romans. And I, I, if I had more time, I'd kind of even dig into this farther, but it's, it's so powerful. So it's in verse 15, the what will I do? Can I just tell you the answer? Here's the answer. The what will I do is this, bring good news. We're just gonna bring good news. However we can. At Spring Lake Park, at Elk River, at Maple Grove, at Lakeville, we're gonna bring good news to our community. 
We're gonna let families and young children know that there is a church that believes that they can know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We're gonna be a church that lets people know that they can have this incredible call of God upon their lives. We're gonna be a church that lets people know that they can make a difference for God. We are that church, right? Come on to somebody, right? We are that church, and so we're gonna to continue to do that. And here's the key, bring the good news. I am thankful for humanitarian works all over the world that build wells and that distribute food and even that do all kinds of things. One of the reasons we have Project Rescue coming next week is because they not only rescue girls and children from human trafficking, but then they lead them to Jesus, then they disciple them, and then they teach them a trade to live with. That's right, amen? So it's just good, yeah, we can clap for that. But it's, it's holistic. But it's not just humanitarian. We know that Jesus is the one that can change a life forever. So bring good news. Um, over the years, I've been on a couple different Kingdom Builder teams um, that shaped up a little different than I thought they were going to when I went. And sometimes you go on a Kingdom Builder mission trip and so many have gone this year. I hope many more go next year because it changes your life. Um, but when I end up on a mission trip that has to do with construction or repairs or painting projects, can I just say it's not my strength? Is there anybody else? Can I get a witness in the room if you're honest? Come on, right? So it's just, it's just, not, it's just not my strength. I, I like to joke that the best two tools I use is a cell phone and a credit card. I am gifted with those two tools and uh, can make things happen with, but it's, it's true actually. And so um, not too many years ago, uh, about four or five years ago, I was in Northern Thailand and the team I was leading was uh, helping with a framing construction project. We were building this concrete wall around the compound of the new church and entrance into the parking area. And we were in a country where less than 1.5% of the population is a Christian. And so we were working really hard. And as, as the leader, I, I, I can't say like, oh, it's a work day. I'm going to go hang out at the coffee shop, right? And so, um, but usually if I try to get into the, the, uh, the making and the mixing of the concrete, I don't do it right. And I honestly, after I carry bags of stuff, I don't know what else to do. And then I realized something. I had a gift. I was really good at scooping sand into a wheelbarrow and pushing it to the people that did the mix. True story. And I just had, I, I, was, I was good at that. I didn't need much skill to scoop sand into a wheelbarrow and then take it to the people that knew the right equations to get the concrete just right. So I didn't have their gift, but I figured out what I could do in that moment and it was just really, really significant. And can I just say this, this will be up on the screen, but all of our locations, I want us to say this aloud together. All right, would you throw it up? Let's say it together, one, two, three. God wants to use me. God wants to use me. Just like sometimes I gotta find out another place I fit. But regardless of your skill set, Emmanuel, regardless of where you've come from, regardless of your age, regardless of your status of life, you may be a single mom, God wants to use you. You may be a teenager, God wants to use you. You may be a child, God will and want to use you. Married adults, senior citizens, God wants to use you, amen? Amen. Until the mission's over, there's no retirement in the kingdom of God until the mission's over. And then I don't, I don't know what it's gonna look like. I hope we're in heaven at some point, right? Come on, celebrating. But all I know is until we're in heaven, which will be this amazing, amazing experience, we're supposed to occupy, we're supposed to serve, we're supposed to do what God has called us to do. Can I share a picture with you of a couple that was on a Kingdom Builders trip um, with me just a couple months ago? Jane and I were in, um, in Argentina, and this is... Israel and Sori and their two little boys and um, got to know them. They're just great people. They're part of our Hispanic ministry at Emmanuel. The whole team was just an amazing team. This is just back in late August. And um, I just want you to know, I just want you to know that this picture, they took it last winter. 
that they are middle-aged, middle-class family, two young children at home, and they both went on a trip together. Why am I sharing this with you? Because do you know, as, as somebody that helps lead teams at Emmanuel, I've, I, I hear all sorts of things of why I can't go. And I just want you to know there's a lot of people that have figured out the why I can't go and to how I can go. And I was around when they were FaceTiming their kids a couple times during the trip where we had Wi-Fi. You can bring that picture down, thanks. And it's just so special and it's so real. But I just want you to know that God wants to use you. He wants to use you. And whatever that looks like, he wants to use you. Whether it's pushing a wheelbarrow full of sand, whether it's going to your neighbor, whether it's prayer walking around your schools, whether it's getting ready and you're a business owner and God's calling you to give it a whole nother level and your generosity is gonna overflow. Whatever that is, whatever your skill set is, God, whatever the skills God's given you, God wants to use me. So here's the application points and then we'll pray. I love this phrase, follow God's promptings. So my encouragement to all of us at Emmanuel today is to follow God's promptings. And I'll just ask you two things for application, okay? Here's two things. What is my next step? Please write it down if you're journaling or see it on your phone, maybe screenshot it off the app. What is my next step? This is not about you thinking what I'm supposed to do or me thinking what you're supposed to do, but just just what what is my next step? Is it to be on a Kingdom Builder team? Is it a new level? Is it, is it a miracle offering that's coming next week? Is it to invite somebody to church? Is it faithful in the tithe like Pastor Nate taught? Is it prayer and I gotta up my prayer game? What is my next step? And the second application I give you is interesting. It's this, what is my bigger step for 2025? For next year, what's my bigger step for 2025? Maybe I'll go on one of those teams. Maybe my generosity will go to a new level. And just just a thought, maybe um, I will make sure my children get a glimpse of God's heart for the world. What's my next step? What's my bigger next step? And I'll finish by saying this, because of eternity, our God loves everyone everywhere. So never forget you and I, everyone at church this weekend, You and I are part of everyone, everywhere. And God loves us with an unconditional love. And everybody said amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, as we wrap up this message, as we take a few minutes to worship, as we think about what our next step is, as we think about the promptings of the Holy Spirit, we want to hear your voice. And we want to say yes to that. So thank you, God, at all of our locations, just as we take just a few moments to worship, Would you speak to our hearts? And would you just share with us what our next step should be? Because you share it in such a loving, amazing way. And we want to do it, God, because of eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen, amen, amen. All across this room, I want to invite you to stand if you are able to today in response to the message that we just heard. Come on, let's sing this out today. I give you glory for all you brought me through. And now I'm ready, come on. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward today. I'm moving forward to follow after you and now i'm ready to whatever you want to do your presence your presence is an open door we want you In every season, in every season, your grace has been enough. 
And I believe in that the best is yet to come. The cross before me, my hope on things above. And in you, Jesus, and the best is yet to come. Your presence, come on. Your presence lives in open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is in open door. So come down. Sing, I know breakthrough is coming, declare it today. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God may be a promise and it won't stop now. Oh, I, know. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God may be a promise and it Oh. 